Jason Lo. Uh, I'm the CEO of TuneTalk, which is a mobile service provider here in Malaysia. Um, we currently have 800,000 subscribers, um, the fastest growing uh, mobile virtual network operator in the world, uh, in the world, I wish, in Asia, um, which is an achievement for us. Uh, we started, a, a, this will be our fifth year in the market, and um, I guess uh, two of our, my proudest moments was getting Justin Bieber when Hotlink thought they had him. <laughs> but um, then we came out and we did a coup d'etat on that, so uh, we were quite excited about that. And secondly, I think um, uh, I'm most proud of, it's not, a, it's, it's not necessarily one achievement, but I'm most proud of our staff because I think we have really um, some of the most amazing people in TuneTalk, um, ranging from you know, the customer care um, all the way up to my trusted CFO. Um, it's all about the people you work with, and I'm very proud that uh, in TuneTalk we have the right people. I'm a natural networker. I'm always a people person. When I first got into uh, back into Malaysia, I recorded my album. I, I, you know, I started doing music, um, and I just kept networking with a lot of people. Back then, I met a guy called Tony Fernandez, um, uh, who told me he was setting up and he was leaving the music business. He was the head of Warner Regional, and he said, "I'm leaving the music business to set up an airline." I told him, "Don't do it. It's a bad idea." Um, and now he is a billionaire, <laughs> and I'm not. <laughs> But anyway, um, I think it's, I would say that as a saying, it's, um, it's not what you know, it's not who you know, it's who you are. Um, attitude is everything. And I think if you have the right attitude, you will eventually find the right fit in whatever, um, whatever you're trying to achieve. And that just means that you just go out there with the right attitude to be open, to open doors, and to meet new people, and to try to be interested in things. Part of what I also do is I'm, I'm a technophile. I'm a techno Technophile always. I love technology. I think technology drives a lot of things in this world and fixes a lot of things. And I try to keep on top of that. And I think people who shy away from technology ultimately lose grasp of where this, where this world is going. The world has been, is being driven by technology today. So I think it's not only networking, it's having that knowledge base that you know what's going on in the world. Constantly being plugged in to, you know, to whoever and, and, and whatever and wherever and everything's happening. So you know, you can read the signs. And, 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 and thirdly, my mentor, I mean, I, I have many mentors. Um, I'm not one of these guys who goes, oh, Richard Branson, oh, you know. I've never read his book. Um, I, I get my mentorship from people around me, from friends, colleagues. I had a, you know, I had a security guard in, um, in United College, uh, Osman. But that guy used to mentor me. He used to tell me about life and be respectful, things like that, you know. So sometimes I give talks and I, I have all these people saying, oh, can you tell us who's your mentor? And I say, well, who's yours? Oh, my mentor is, uh, you know, Bill Gates. I'm like, well, what about your mom? Isn't she a mentor? What? Well, she's just a housewife. I'm like, yeah, but, you know, she gave birth to you, right? And she raised you, and you, look, you don't look so screwed up. Well, you probably are, but you look not so screwed up. And, 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 that, and the person asks you a question, maybe, uh, I'm like, go and ask your mom, because your mom mentors you, right? Everyone mentors you, people around the environment uh, that you're in. So take notice of everyone out there, even the security guards. You know, I think uh, people get too taken away with all these superstars and like, you know, this one Bill Gates and he did it, he dropped out of college and all that. Uh, it's, it's, that's not where men true mentorship comes from. It comes, it, comes, it comes to you every day in very small ways. The trick is identifying them. Inspiration from different people can come from different places. Some people take inspiration from religion, some people take it from art, some people take it from their environment. I always try to take it from my environment. You know, what inspires me is the people around me and the things I see around me in that environment. I like movies as well, you know, like anything artistic. I love the creative industries. Now remember, your brain is like a muscle. You have to exercise it every day. And if you're going to be creative, you have to do something creative every day. Whether it's writing in a diary, or whether it's doing a painting, or writing poetry, or, or music as I do. So when I go home at night, and I go home in the evening, I play with my kids, then I put them to bed. I play with my wife, and I put her to bed. And then I'll go to my studio, and I'll do something creative every night. And I think that keeps the muscle working. And you want to keep that muscle working, because creativity and imagination are the things that drive innovation and change. So, Really what you should do is 
do something innovative every day. Yes, go get that old violin out. Just write something every day. Before you know it, you'll have a whole body of work that you've been working on. But at least you've done something creative. I met someone who was on Candy Crush level 400. And that inspired me. Because I wanted to beat the heck out of them. And I'm only on level, I'm Candy Crush level 882 or something like that. It is a damn hard game. Um, and I think that, that, that to me is something that's, it sounds a little funny, right? But that's what we all do. We all look at someone who's level 400 and go, I can do that. I can, level 400 to you might be something material. I mean, if you're Chinese and you might think, okay, level 400 is Mercedes, okay. If you're Malay, level 400 is, uh, you know, becoming an MP. So you decide what you want, right? You identify what your level is that you want to achieve. My warning to all of you is, do not be driven by money. The worst thing that you can do in this, this, this world, this day and age, is say, I want money. Because money doesn't mean anything, yeah? Level 400 does mean something. It means I have no life and I play Candy Crush all the time. I probably watch a lot of porn. But it does also mean that you achieve something that nobody else has. Yeah? Money, a lot of people have money. It doesn't really do anything. Um, if you enjoy what you're doing, then money will come naturally. So the luckiest people on earth are those who are not driven by money, who are driven by the will to accelerate and to achieve something. All right, so thank you so much, Jason. Sure, sure. Thank you.